pretty nice fish. I was telling you earlier about my mother's first driving lesson. She cleaned out the ditch real well. She ended up going to a driving school and got her license at age 69, I think. And she did the driving for my, her and my father for as long as he lived which was another couple years. But my father had, de had developed diabetes as an older man. He wasn't that old, he was 73 when he died. But his vision went and then his kidneys began to not function correctly and he spent, it, spent the last year of his life going back and forth to dialysis which I'm glad they can do. But after a while it got where he wasn't, his good days weren't good days anymore. And he's the kind of man that was always in charge of whatever he was doing on the construction job or whatever. He was the one, you know, he, he anyway, he finally decided he wasn't gonna have any more dialysis. And, he spared our family from having to make some hard decisions there toward the end, but he lasted about a week after he decided not to have any more dialysis, and uh, that was a tough week on us, us, my sister, myself, and my mother. But I'm just thankful for the fact that he spared us from having to decide some things that would have been really hard to decide a few months down the road if it lasted that long. I guess it's a real blessing to be able to say that my daddy was the best man I ever knew. If you can say that, then you're indeed blessed. And I just hope that when it gets my time to come, my time to finish up my life here on this earth, I hope that I'll handle it with as much bravery as he did. And I think the secret to that bravery is that he had it all settled where he was gonna spend eternity. He had given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and had his sins forgiven and had provision made for eternity. I hope that's true for you too. See if we can catch another fish or two out of this little bedding area. This is one of those places I found yesterday after my camera battery went dead. That's a little one. Those little ones like that, they call them sneakers. They sneak in to fertilize the eggs when the big males are preoccupied, probably with my fly. those black hawks and C-130s and occasionally a big old C-17 come over. Those C-17s are like a bumblebee to me. It's amazing that something that big with a body that wide can fly at all. I'm so thankful that we have military who protect us and are ready to defend our freedom. My father was one of those World War II generation. He served on a troop ship during World War II, drafted right out of high school, graduated in 1944 and went in. They took him the next week. 
there was a friend of his, I think about the same age, maybe in the same graduate class, and didn't want to go. So he took the shotgun and shot his toe off the day before they were supposed to ship out. They took him anyway. Sore foot and all. By contrast, one of my uncles, the day he was examined, they turned him down because he had a bad scar on his foot. He didn't have to go in World War II, but when Korea came along, they took him right up. He was served in the Korean conflict. I think I had like four or five uncles that served between World War II and Korean conflict. My father was one of 12 children. And uh, one of his brothers, one that was next to him, died on a little island off Okinawa, right toward the end of the war. came along right at the end of the Vietnam War. The year I was old enough for the draft, they had the lottery. That would have been, I'm thinking 1971, maybe. Nixon was in then. They had the lottery, but they never called any up. I had a low number but uh, never was called to serve. Lots of guys I knew went to school with served in Vietnam. They're all heroes too, even though maybe the politicians had their hand in the war a little more than should have been. The ones serving on the battlefield were doing their duty. There's another little fish. I believe that's about all I'm going to catch out of this little hole. GoPro stopped recording.